Put your hands together and welcome Dr. Stephen Francis. Praise God. Isn't God so powerful? And I tell you what, when I was listening to all the sessions, I feel so humbled. I, feel, I felt so small, not only through the magnitude of God's presence that he was manifesting, the anointing that these men of God were carrying, the depth from which they spoke, the presence that was emanating because they live there. They carry that presence and they come. You see, I wanted to understand your people of God. And so, uh, well, before I go. So I want to thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for what God is doing in the conference. It keeps on encouraging us. That was truly God who started the conference, isn't it? It is not another intuitive idea that we have. It's not another idea for promotion or to make a mark. But I want to encourage you also to pray that the day will come, it will become a regional conference. That we will attract men of God, women of God, ministers from Asia to come for a regional time. What the word of the Lord is for Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific region. How powerful is that? Imagine. Because here there is no law. Uh, they don't talk long stories, but they say the word of the Lord as it is. And we are only the length of time now, so far. That's powerful. And so, Father, this afternoon, once again, we just look up to you. You are the reservoir of wisdom. You are the reservoir of knowledge. You are the reservoir of revelation. You are life. You are resurrection. In you, there is no end. In you, there is no bottom. You are greater than the entire vast universe. And I pray that that one moment again, we will have. Even if, as, we, as we kept on hearing the word, Lord, that the audience of one. So let it be, once again, the audience of the king as we sit before you to listen to you. May the voice of the Holy Spirit be heard by every man and woman who is sitting here. This afternoon, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Again and again, the Lord has been stirring my spirit. Even before the conference, uh, uh, fasting and praying, that there is a special grace that is going to come upon the ministers who are gathered here. And whatever we are hearing, God is preparing us for effective ministry for this year, you know. That means all that you have been hearing as even the family of God, this word is for us to be effective in the house of God this year. So we've got to cut all the slackness that will come. Because five years of, five days of glory is fantastic. The moment you go back home, everything else is waiting. But remember, you are a warrior. You know how to pray. You know how to handle. And all that is going to come, but we know how to rise up. Amen. Our conference is stronger, a greater, stronger, and higher in Him. I want to share my part of the story, this session, where I shared with you on the first, the greatness of God is imparted from within. You see, something about God when He renews, Sometimes when you want to know greatness, you buy books on greatness. When you want to learn to prosper, you buy books on prosperity. You, you buy books on this and books of that. But what you realize is that when your spirit man doesn't have the capacity to hold that anointing, it will seep it through out of you. And so we are not talking about just these resources, which are all of that are there, which is great. We are talking about a capacity to go and get ourselves renewed in the inner chamber of God, where you can hold this capacity. Even as the men of God are releasing words from here, 
if your spirit man is weak, you can't hold it, you know. You can't capture. Listen, don't bother whether you understand what they say or not. Don't bother about that. Just carry it as much as you can and go back home. When the time is right, your mind will understand. But at least your spirit has received it, deposited it. Don't confuse between these two transactions. I don't understand. Therefore, I don't think so. It's right. Forget about that part of the story. Amen? All the men who are standing here are proven by him. So there's no longer you need to give any certificate. We, 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 we went past that point. The only certificate we always stand is for the approval of God. And so let's come to that point. If not, our mind will keep on creating the doubts and the revelation will seep out from our hearts again. Then for some, this will become another conference. Another conference. Just an, another way of just sitting and listening. But this is where the eagles will gather. Amen. Oh, they are waiting upon God. And this third session, I uh, want to, uh, I mean, not third, my, my, my last session, but the fourth session for the day, I want to have a, 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 a thinking on being higher in him. This higher is not our plan or aspiration, our desire to be somebody out there that everybody will know our name. Everybody will know our church. I'm not talking about branding from a business perspective. I'm not talking about marketing your ministry from a business perspective. I'm not talking about that kind of higher. We are out there to beat others. That's the world. When the church buys into the cooperation of the world, without realizing, they will start marketing the church. Do you know people are marketing their church in conferences? Where the worship team, one will try to beat the other by being the best. We need to do it. But we are one in Him. Some team will sing the later songs. Some teams will be singing the hymns. But you are driven to the presence of the Father. That's what you got to keep looking at. That's what you must see. Whatever songs they sing, if they carry the presence, you will enter in. We are one. I got to see that from that kind of perspective. So it's not a marketing moment. Why are the resources there? So that you will know that the men of God who speak here and encourage, they are following up through materials to encourage, to build up. And if you go to their church, they would be speaking the same things. One of the words that came out, uh, 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 Pastor John Go said about excellence. If you go into their church, anyone, anyone who are sitting here for now, that's all I know. You, you see the reno, you see the stuff they have. To bring the excellence of God, everything is done up well. Why? Because they are following up what they perceive of the Spirit and they outdo it in their church. So that means if you go to their church, they listen to their teaching at home, at broad, you read their writings, listen to their city, the same anointing is circulating everywhere. The man of God, before he speaks, he lifts it out as an example that you can catch it no matter where you go. If not, we will fall into the trap that we are just teaching about it. But you go to their church, huh? nothing happened. It fills the process. And so we want to transmit that lifestyle of the grace of God. You will hear fantastic things. How many of you know that tonight God is going to rock this place, rock our hearts? He's going to manifest himself in a way that we have not expected yet. But you've got to expect God, I don't want to go empty. I want to scoop up something from the presence of the Father. Amen. Higher in Him. I want to be high in Him. I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about whose gifts is good and whose gifts is great. I'm not talking about the, uh, about the uh, uh, boundaries of the anointing. Uh, Pastor Francis uh, beautifully said about the boundaries of what you should do and what you should not be doing. A lot of people, they only have a revelation of what they should be doing. But when you know what you should not be doing, you'll be focused. There are many things God doesn't want you to do. He only wants you to do this part of the story. And then your picture will be a beautiful picture. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Higher in Him. Being high in Him. Having the confidence and the security that you have this audience of God's attention when you're talking. What more do we need? We go back to Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. In that split of a moment as I shared with you, in the fasting and praying, the Lord showed me the three ways of looking at the scripture. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases the strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with uh, wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. The first night we spoke about there is a total recall from heaven, come and wait before me, renew what I'm about to do. See, when your spirit is not renewed, your anointing will not sustain. You can pick up 11 mantles from here, by the time you walk back, it will fall. That is why the Bible says, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his mind, then put on the armor. Hello? The armor will not work, will not work for the weak soldier. You need to have some strength for the armor to work. You need some kind of persistence to withstand as the enemy is pushing you. That kind of a, a ability to hold on the ground. Confessing the scriptures, focusing your mind, thinking about God's goodness. Don't let anything trigger you. If you're a man who's always given to emotions of anger, sadness, depression, the enemy is very easy to tickle you and anger gives you up. The uncontrolled emotion breaks you down very easily, no matter how strong your weapon is. And so there needs to be a God. Not only in our spirit, also in our soul, and also in our body. It's the entire make of a person that makes you to be a warrior. So whichever way the enemy is coming, you are watching. The devil is going to come. Do you understand that? He's not going to stop. He's never going to stop. The higher your anointing, the bigger the devil becomes. He sends more powerful demons according to the level of your anointing. But the warrior looks out for the enemy to come. Because you can't be a warrior if you don't fight. You're not a warrior if you don't win. You're not a warrior if you don't overcome. So the warriors are always looking out for a fight. They are waiting for it. We will prepare, we look out for, we prepare the church, we fast, we pray, we cover the spirit, but there is always an eye looking out which way in the new way a trouble may come. But God, by his gracious spirit, he'll always warn us ahead of time. That's where the vision, the gifts, the prophecy, the spirit intuition will just keep on bubbling. You know something is about to happen now. Being high. Do you realize that when you look at the third way, when the, Holy, when, the, when the Lord Jesus told me on the table as I was sitting, he said, I wanted to look at it. I find it difficult to explain how it happened. In less than 40 seconds, all the three sessions outlined, I saw it all at the same time, as though in different colors, the different category. Today's the third one. Higher in him. Do you realize that the Bible says, you shall renew. First day, total recall. Wait upon me. Second session, you see the human weaknesses. Four words, faint, weary, no might, exhausted. Yet God is commanding you, in the midst of all this, you need to come and wait upon me. As people of God, we must understand the cycle, the way God deals with us. You wait, you mount up. And then you start the points of mounting up and flying. And then you are running. And then you start walking. And when you get bored enough and too many troubles, go back to wait upon the Lord again. You can't stop this cycle. 
But many times, God, I'm walking, I'm slowing down. What to do next? What to do next? You see, if you have been reading your Bible, the next thing to do is to go back to wait. There's nothing more to do to it. Go back to this process of waiting. Every time you feel the anointing is getting weaker, you can't perceive, go to a point of waiting. But we keep on saying, oh, but you know I got to work. You know I got children. You know I got to cook. You know I got to do this. In these last four days, you yourself have proven that you can set aside everything and wait upon God from morning to night. If you can do this here, you can do this again. Whenever you feel the weakness, declare holiday to your kitchen. Tell your children to go wild and eat anything they want on the grass. Don't cook. And they'll be happy actually, you know. <laughs> Just go and fast and seek the Lord. Renew your spirit man. Shut down whoever is calling you for ministry appointment. The person is about to die, command die tomorrow. Today I need to pray. Bible says now, to be higher, the Lord says, you shall renew, you shall mount, you shall run, you shall walk. For human frailties, for human weaknesses we saw yesterday, today we saw four power renewal of the Holy Spirit in a man. I wanted to do some PowerPoints, but because I was so fasting and praying, I didn't want to, you know, do stuff, but so amazed by it. Do you realize that a in order to be up on the stage, the amount of stuff you must know how to do. Dance, gymnastics, sing, do drama. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. That makes a complete package man of God, I tell you. You know why? I tell you why. You've got to capture the attention of the people who are sitting from morning to night, you know. So there is a lot of laughter, some stories, some tears, some worship. And, and that keeps you so occupied. And most often, I tell you, by the time they are finishing, I'm wondering, so fini fast. Ah. And then some people came and told me, Pastor, we should have the sessions a little bit longer. Okay, next year we add one more day. Huh? Just joking. We don't want to get tired. <laughs> Wait on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. One more day extra, you go and pray. <laughs> we will open this door. We will charge you the money, but you pray. <laughs> we will facilitate by playing the CD. <laughs> you shall renew. The Lord is opening the door for every man and every woman who is weak and tired. He is saying, if you are willing to pay the price and step in, I am promising you, all things is going to happen to you. You shall renew, you shall mount, you shall run, you shall walk. Just come in. Don't keep on grumbling outside the tent. Don't keep on grumbling about the burdens of the ministry, about the difficulty of the people. That is why God has sent you to heal the brokenhearted. Ministry is never fun, it's never easy, and it's never glamorous. Having said about this word glamorous, can I ask you, everybody as a family of God, to give a powerful thanksgiving round of applause for all the committee people and the helpers and the volunteers who have been working so hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord for them. <laughs> Because we standing on the stage look a little bit more glamour and glitter, but the other one is making sure we've got the drink, we've got the mug, we've got the batteries, we've got the light, we've got the shine. But they're the ones who are getting more tired. I want to thank the Lord oh, for them it's working so hard. God promises, you know. He's telling me, son, my daughter, when I'm here to renew your spirit and give you a vision, and give you a purpose and give you the money when you need it. Why are you begging and crying and talking about the problem and looking for help here, trying to talk to these people, sell this, sell that, and convince those who can give money, you know, this is my project. And when if you look up to me, I will move their hearts to give. The wealth 
of the nations comes in. And you know, there's a scripture in Isaiah, those who do not know you will call you father. They'll become your sons and daughters from afar. And I mean, people who don't know you will send you the money. And you don't know why. And that's what God is doing in the church. He promises, I shall renew. When I think about the love of God, you know, there is a place in God where he will declare, you shall be. That's the place of the man of God. That's the place you need to wait. Because that's what happened to Moses. You shall be. You shall be. This afternoon, receive that. You shall be. But the problem with people is, the more we see in the spirit and say what? Well, but pastor, I am not. Very quickly, we cut off that power from flowing through. But pastor, but, but you know, I am not like this. I'm not saying what you are not. I'm saying what you're going to become through the power of the Holy Spirit. For, for, for quite a number of years, my son was just short. You know, I, I can look up like that and, and talk. Suddenly, man, the last five months, he's now here. Now he's putting his hand on my shoulder and walking. I say, hello, hello, hello. I'm still your father. Huh? He told me, take it easy, give me a high five. <laughs> He suddenly, because you shall be, is that God is looking at you. Can you close your eyes for a moment? I want you to visualize four things. Because when I was writing this, on my table I saw four visions coming in. I want you to visualize. Number one, you shall renew. See yourself like a bulb. When it's changed brand new, it is shining so bright. See yourself shining so bright. Picture number two. See yourself as an eagle flying high as possible. Just picture it. There are some ministers where the Lord is saying, there will come a time. What you are praying and sowing in tears, you shall fly high like an eagle and you will soar with my spirit and the impossible things I've called you to do shall be established, says the Lord. You know, uh, also to uh, Pastor Joyce, the Lord brought you back here this time, not just to rest, but for a powerful renewal of a new mantle that is waiting for you, a new assignment, a new grace, a new door, Few things are going to happen that requires your focus, your attention, and a restructuring of a certain way of doing ministry. That the Lord is going to build a bridge, a very powerful prophetic. New things are birthing. And so the Lord brought you here, and he's, I'm seeing this uh, in eagle, and you're flying. And the Lord is saying, there's coming the season where I will just cause my wind to blow, and your sail will keep moving forward. The third picture I wanted to see is that you are running for the Lord. Can you see yourself as a marathon runner who will never lose? They are runners. Though they don't lose, they're able to finish the marathon race. I wanted to see your picture like that. Don't see yourself like every three meters you stop, you walk, and you pant for breath, and then you start walking. I don't know. Look yourself as a runner. Even slow, but you're still running. The fourth picture is a man who is so charged up, and now you're walking. Not a dragging walk, normal, consistent walk. Not like why I have to walk, but I'm going towards somewhere. I'm walking. See yourself as a man and a woman empowered, fully charged in the spirit. Thank you, Father. Do you realize, as you think about all of these things, you don't keep on looking at the mirror, your own image of being weak. That what I can't do. I am not like this. I am not like that. If you like to sing and you don't know how to sing, 
take some courses. Simple as that. Because if you want to be what God wants you to be, you've got to put some training process to this. If you're called to be in the ministry in a vocation level, it means you're full-time, you need to keep on having professional developments. As a pastor, all the different five, how to run the church, how to manage this, how to manage finances. And there must be professional development. There must be counselors that you have established that you can talk to. Wanted to see yourself handling well the house of God, not failing. That stories are over. Francis said it very clear that the rear view mirror is such a small thing. You can, you have a glance to make sure that you are heading the right direction, but not keep on looking there and die. Think about that. Pastor Amos gave a very apostolic big picture of an assignment. Pastor John Cole kept very important of the wealth. You can have a great anointing, a great call. Without money, you go nowhere, isn't it? You can have, I want to change the world. Change what? We need money. And that money is not dying hard and trying to please people and running after money and looking out which businessman can support, that man can support. No, no, no. no. He's praying and waiting upon the spirit of the Lord. He gives that ability to speak. And then that anointing causes people to flourish and come and give. You heard Pastor Francis speaking about the anointing of the marketplace. You upgrade the anointing of people who are in the church. They know how to overcome the process. They know how to prophesy into their company. They know how to prophesy into their performance level. They know how to prophesy on themselves every Monday. Because nobody likes to go on Monday work. Monday is a gloomy day. Monday is like a Garfield day. You need to prophesy yourself. Monday is your greatest day because Sunday you have been fully charged up. Monday is the best performance day for a child of God, isn't it? But we are operating in the world system. Whatever happens, Jesus won't come back on a Monday. That's I'm very sure. Because all the pastors are off on that day. <laughs> he comes on other days. He knows we are resting, okay? When I was thinking about this, listen for all those who are taking a break, listen about this. You shall renew, you shall mount, you shall run, you shall walk. I heard from the mouth of Jesus, he said, there is no place for passivity in the kingdom of Father. There is no place for that. The kingdom of heaven is full of activity. It is full of an activity energized by the presence of God, renewed from within. There is no place for lag. It is filled with angels coming and ministering, but there are seasons, progressive stages to experience in God. Ten years from now, you, you, you will know you will know a couple of the speakers as pastors. You will not have known them as prophets. Because God was hiding them inside. It's not your season. It was all being in the making. They can prophesy well, but it's not out to be known as a prophet. Some of them ask me, how come? How come there are so many local prophets that you didn't know about? Because God was hiding them. It's not their season at that time, but now their season has come out. Hallelujah. Five years from now, some of you will become the speakers. Thank you for a very big half base. <laughs> hey, listen. God won't force you to be what you are not. But there are some who are marked by God. That one from day one, they'll be dying. One day I'll be there. And they are the ones who will come. Because if that's not our desire, we will fail this process. The Lord said to me that the church, when we are high in him, there is a new anointing that he's going to give upon my people, he said. 
by the way, when Pastor uh, John Cole was uh, speaking about Southeast Asia, I was very uh, encouraged in my spirit as well, because I wrote in my uh, book, uh, The Word of the Lord, I don't want to do what he did by throwing to anybody, so I'm going to keep it back. I told the people I'm going to give away his CDs free. <laughs> you kaya boleh lah. Saya butter pun boleh. I'm just marking around with you. Anyway, I wrote about Southeast Asia. I saw in the map Southeast Asia, different countries. Different bloodsheds, injustice and problems and God's judgment was coming in. But the Lord said, I will clean Southeast Asia by my blood and by my power. But my church must pray. Must pray. Last year when I was ministering in a church in KL, I saw bodies lying down in a vision. Bloodshed was going in everywhere. We will hear of murders, murders, and murders. I heard the word of the Lord. And they told the pastors who were gathered about 300, let's pray that God will intervene. It's not for fun. This is not nice things to say. But when the Lord shows, we have a responsibility. So I was very encouraged that I was not weird to hear all this, but you know, there's another weird kind. Okay. <laughs> The Lord was saying, so arise my children, my people. Organize myself, uh, organize yourself as my army, says the Lord. Strengthen your arms with my strength so that you will be able to stand in these last days. Stand, therefore, my people stand. Whether you notice it or not, all the six, uh, five speakers uh, other than me, they kept on different times mentioning the word stand. Whether you paid attention, I was paying attention to all the key words. The key words that were jumping out from their spirit was stand, stand, stand. Don't let go. Don't let the devil push you above the mark. Are you with me? God has created that mark. This is your line. Never let it go, no matter what it is. If some people threaten you, Pastor, if you don't change your message, we will leave. Tell them, please, leave. Because we are not going to change. We will preach the same. I tell you why. It is much more difficult to go into the chamber of the Lord. Fast and pray. Weep and cry. Being broken. And then I come out. I just change because you don't like it. We will not change. This is the way it's going to be. Because God has already given the assignments to all the men and the women of God. In this last day ministry, march forward and take the land. Isn't it? Every place the sole of your foot shall touch, I will give it to you. For the first time in 25 uh, years or 28 years with the Lord, 22 years in full-time ministry, for the first time I heard from the Lord, how big do you want me to bless you? I've never heard this word. Always he tells me only this portion. This time he asks, how big he asks? Uh, how big do you want? But I didn't answer, you know. Every time you ask big things, you got a lot more work to do. <laughs> a lot more praying to do. A lot more fighting demons to do. A lot more begging, a lot more committee meetings to put your head into. A lot more breaking, removing the stones and laying a pathway. Our, our Pastor Joyce, if I can mention, Singaporean lady, Indian lady, <laughs> trained uh, 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 with Pastor Amos in the mission. God told her to go to Estonia and plant a church. Okay? Hello, are you listening? Thing is easier. Yeah? You ask her. Four years, you know. She's a spiritual gangster, you know. You don't play. play. <laughs> Hello. Weather is cold. All kind of stuff away from the family. She's out there alone simply because my God said she's there. Now I say one word in Tamil. Huh? Since all are whacking Chinese words, huh? 
ಕೊಲ್ಲುತ್ತೆ ಕೊಲ್ಲುತ್ತೆ ಅವರ ಅವರ ಕೊಲ್ಪು ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಲೆಸ್ಟ್ರಾಲ್ ಯಾ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ನೈಸ್ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ಚರ್ಚ್ ವಿಲ್ ರೈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಆರ್ಮಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸೇಡ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಫರ್ಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟು ದ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಿಕ್ ಮಿ ಸಿಕ್ ಮಿ ಅರ್ಲಿ ವಾಲ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಮಿ ಸಿಕ್ ಮಿ ಅರ್ಲಿ ವಾಲ್ ದ ಡಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಅರ್ತ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ರೈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸನ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ರೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ the lord said from young to old from babies to the aged they will grow in faith now is the time my word will come on the tongues of my people and they will start prophesying my word the same way the anointing came on the disciples on the day of pentecost as they preach with signs and wonders it's once again going to happen much more in a bigger way now my people must rise says the lord my people must rise in spiritual warfare and learn to fight recently one of the word the lord kept on uh, uh, saying that is you're going to receive a territorial anointing i think yesterday night uh, last night no last night at the night oh, oh, oh pastor calling god and said you have a territorial anointing oh man I lo- my my ears but listen to <laughs> we need to learn how to conquer hello you know what's happening to churches we run into the street corners we run into the hole we buy the cheapest place the cheapest mic the cheapest thing in the church and look we we build the house of god like the a beggar's house it doesn't reflect the glory of god it doesn't even reflect it's a place of worship you, people will find it difficult to imagine your god is so poor and living in this little cheap second hand things hello are you listening there was a time when we built the church in second hand products people love to give second hand broken things to pastors you know pastor my tv is not working you got to tap 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 you want it ah anything broken they give it to the church junk store <laughs> and 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 when we buy new things in the church the committee gets upset what are you spending pastor why 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 you want to spend all this money for what we we can i have a second hand thing you know you just put la after all it's a church la hey for you it can be a church but the house of my king look at the way the tabernacle was built expensive things the top of the range in everything the thing was done for the tabernacle i'm not saying buy above your budget but in what you can afford buy the best is that okay after 5 years you can change when you got more money and and that old product give it to another church and bless him because there is a rolling thing that will take place just give them free bless them praise the lord i'm just telling you seriously you you, you i mean you how many of you like the sound and the and 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 the clarity of all the speakers in in this place you like it it costs sam 60000 dollars to do it in a in a tamil church setting it's quite a big blessing that's the way it is because it's the house of our father we are higher in him we need to upgrade our spirit and the lord said a new anointing of prayer a global revival of prayer is going to come upon my house my people and my nation because he will not come down unless you pray as men of god women of god don't keep complaining take time to pray how many days will the lord come i wish i know he doesn't sometimes sometimes he's just listening whether you will do it or not the spirit of prayer oh pastor pastor but i don't have time give away the eating time the 45 may give that away go and talk go and talk if you will come i will renew you i will give you the wings to mount up and i, I and i don't want to talk about the spiritual visions yet i'm, I'm not i don't want to talk about that mounting yet the year before was 
together with my wife, we were praying and kneeling down early in the morning and we're doing our 40 days fast. And first time, the prayer that I prayed for many, many years, first time, five o'clock in the morning, two large wings came out of me and an angel brought me up to the different locations and the Lord was telling me, so at that moment I felt what it was and you shall mount with wings. This time I had a different experience. This time the Lord made me understand you in me and I in you. He brought me into him and I went into him. When he was speaking about the earth, I, I was seeing the earth through the eyes of Jesus. Small globe. I was able to see continents. I was able to see oceans. From there, I'm looking down. So I thought, wow, I'm up there. Then when the entire experience finished, in that vision itself, I came out, out of him. Then I asked, why is this? He showed me, you in me and I in you. When we are in him, you are able to see everything from a heavenly perspective. Then like the crazy Joseph that we heard being preached about, you will shake your hand for those who betrayed you and say, thank you, brother. <laughs> it's because of you I am the prime minister. Thank you so much. Something is gone here, you know. Because you are able to see everything from a divine perspective. It is because of the brokenness. I am who I am today. I kept on asking the Lord, if some of the things I know today, if I would have learned about it earlier when I was pastoring my first church, I would have avoided a lot more mistakes. The Lord said, you can't be who you are today if you did not go through the 20 years of breaking and rolling grounds. I had to take 20 years to shape you, break you, mold you today who you are. But that doesn't stop. It's going to be more if I want to be higher in him. I am in him. There's a lot of people who ask, oh, oh, we want to prophesy like you. See, you go to any of these guys, and, and I'm sure there are some more people sitting out there you can prophesy, which is all great. One of the times I was training a team of people to prophesy in the midst of distraction. They would say, how is that? So I, I, I played for them a Michael Jackson song for one minute. Listen to it. Then I gave them the second minute to prophesy. Lock into the spirit very quickly. You must be able to switch because distraction is all around you. Everywhere. Every time you've got to tweak yourself and hear what the Lord is saying. And that's why, that's the way to become a prophet. So they can tap anytime. They switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. And that's what we want to learn. There will come a time where we don't have to be busy praying for people in the altar call. Because when someone is crying or need healing, you touch them on the next seat, they are healed in Jesus' name. We are looking for those times of glory. Times of glory. Times of glory where men of God, women of God will not fall in pride. Because whatever I think I can do, everybody is doing. Malula. <laughs> There's no way to pride because the Spirit of God is bringing us higher. And higher in him. There is a place that we can mount. Very interestingly, the new anointing of prayer is going to come upon the house. Our church structure for this entire year, a lot more prayer meetings are involved. A lot more fast things are involved. Because if we don't shift the, anointed, uh, the spirit structure into a prayer mode, then what God has will not come down. Because the Lord said, if you pray, I will speak to you. If you seek me, I will show up. You know, the Lord is not hiding from us. Come. I remember sometimes uh, we call people and uh, they say, Pastor, but I got to cook for my children. You know, I, I find it amusing when you can say these kind of things in the presence of the Lord. But God, I got to cook for my children, Lord. The children are dying to eat outside. Like, just give them some money. Don't eat outside. Enjoy. Oh, but outside food, not healthy, you know. Then the recess, canteen time, all how? Huh? 
you need to be delivered. Yeah. Deliver, la, you know. Every day they're eating school food, outside canteen food. Wow. Oh God, MSG. So what? Huh? Pray and seek the Lord. I was wondering when Pastor Francis was uh, Samuel, his son's name is Samuel. I've seen the family. The, if, if you hear his testimony, you just, Paul will start crying. That's how broken path he went through. How come he's able to still serve God and still shine for Jesus, travel here, travel there? The amount of CD he is putting there must go through 10, 15 minutes to read through, you know. Everything got face of eagle. <laughs> so you got to see what type of eagle that one. <laughs> how, how, huh? Pastor Amos, ah, that one, no need to tell the story. That one's a legend. John Coe's got two children, two children, isn't it? Two. Lived in China for 10 years. Shocking, isn't it? Successful businessman. And then now God said, Come here. He says, Still want to go to China? Something like that. <laughs> How come, huh? They got family, they got children. How come they are so committed to the will of the Father? I tell you, there's only one reason. Jesus died for them. A price which no one on earth has paid. So may I encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, come higher and see the one who is crucified for you. See the lamb who's going to come back. The king who's going to return. Upgrade your commitment, your dedication to the Lord. People get very upset the moment you talk about church. Oh, these fellas are all building their own little kingdom. No, 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 no. It's for him. If you are disappointed and hurt by church, you need to be healed. We don't have to change anything. Are you listening? Jesus is the one who opened his mouth and said, I will build my church. The disciples got no clue. What, what, what? Church, what is that? We heard the uh, this morning, uh, yesterday. Oh, oh, this morning. I, I'm getting confused with the dates. Uh, the temple worship. Ah, uh, John Co. Temple and synagogue. Who said that? Ah, uh? uh, Pastor John. But but they have never heard the word church before. You know, Jesus was the first one to give a new revelation. I will build my church. Uh, church, ecclesia. What is that? New revelation was given them first time. That is why we are dying to build the house for which he is coming. He is coming for that. Interestingly, the eagle has uh, two pair of uh, lenses, two, two lenses. One lens is when it's flying on the high, almost, some of the eagles can fly 30,000 feet. That's almost aircraft Level, you know, 30,000 is almost aircraft level. You can fly that high, but because as they're approaching the sun, they've got this lens to cover that the, the shining brightness of the sun doesn't make them blind. But as they're coming down to almost 10,000 feet, there's another lens that opens up where they can see accurately the prey that is running. And they can dive in such a rocket speed downward and with accuracy grab. I don't know whether the other day you had an opportunity to take a glance in the uh, uh, a video clip that was on Yahoo website where an eagle came and grabbed a baby. Did you see that? In the park. The baby was there. I think the eagle thought it was a rabbit or what. It was a cute little baby. And man, it flapped his wings and carried to a certain distance and dropped from there. Imagine the father still videotaping the eagle. <laughs> he runs frantically because the baby is going out. How powerful the eagle. The ability to see up to the sun, the ability to look down. And God wants 
us to remember as much as you are being prophetic, being up high in the heaven, telling all the glories of heaven, you must have eyes on the lost people of this earth. You must have eyes on what is going on in humanity. Because some people are so spiritually powerful, can't reach out to one soul. They don't have a passion for the loss. Tell them, hey, uh, 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 oh, they can pray. Pastor, uh, give me an opportunity to, uh, uh, I can worship. You know, when I, when I uh, pray, uh, the Lord Jesus comes and have a cup of tea with me. You know? Wow, all that is great. Okay, sister, come. Uh, the brother is sick. Can you go and pray? Oh, you don't want to just go. Hey, hey. Cannot lie. I will ask the Lord first. Oh, man. They are so hyper-spiritual. I feel like a baby in the Lord. But these are the ones who have amounted to nothing everywhere they went. You have to have our eyes on God. You must have our eyes on the lost. Pastor Francis said it so clearly. I thought he was kicking me, but uh, he was not. So much of heaven, you don't have a purpose, you're flying where? The purpose is the eyes that looks down. All this revelation must translate to build the house for Jesus Christ. It must translate to action. See what God is saying. Some people love to pray, but they don't want to serve the Lord in the church. You know? I only want to pray. Why you are late for meeting? I was praying and the Lord caught me into the third heaven. And then never let me go. I asked the Lord, Lord, let me go. Let me go. But he said, no, 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 no. You don't worry. And the whole, the whole conversation will take place. Can, uh, uh, can you do a usher ministry? Can I? I sit in the throne of the Lord. The way they talk, huh? you feel like chill in your spine. Oh, you. The throne of the Lord. I don't want to touch sinners and have transference. If you can't transfer that anointing out, what are you doing for? Do you know how many people we are touching when we are praying? Do you know how many sins which are hidden in our lives right in this auditorium? Yet when the man of God touch, the anointing cleanses us. And we get dirty sometimes in return. You feel filth coming in because you're praying for others. And we go back to the blood of the Lamb. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. I'm a, I'm a professional counselor, licensed counselor. There are times where I've, I counsel people with sexual addiction. The amount of stuff they tell pollute your mind in that one hour. After that session, I say, cleanse me through the blood, Lord. Cleanse me. Because I've been sent by God to clean sickness and sin. Pollution, that's my job. I cannot be so high up in the Holy of Holies and I forget to look down on the laws which the Lord has sent me to. Are you with me, folks? We cannot forget the laws. I was talking to a man of God, Ajit Fernando. If you have read, uh, read his book, uh, Purpose uh, Driven Ministry, it's uh, a good fan. And um, I was talking about spirituality, desert spirituality, and all of the different things. He said, Stephen, you need to be careful with all these things, man, because some of these guys, they have so much of passion for God, but they don't have passion for the loss. When you don't have passion for the loss, it is not complete in you. It's not complete. You have to think about this. So there is a paradox. There is a tug of war. As much as you're high in him, he gives you strategies. You must start running on earth, completing that work. Then you get so tired, you start walking. Cannot, lumbe. Okay, go back for renewal. Total recall. Come and wait before me. I want you to think about it, folks. God is not building people who are spiritually lazy, spiritually strong, spiritually so strong for what? To fight some enemy higher in him. Give fruits for the kingdom. I saw another very interesting documentary. Now, this is exactly 10 years ago. I could remember that very clear. I don't know why. I was having lunch and I was just flickering with my TV channels and saw Discovery. I was so happened that day it was uh, about Eagle. 
And uh, the eagle that catches the snakes, you know, sea eagle, uh, sea eagle, like catching the snakes and fishes and all of that. And this particular sea eagle dives to the river, catches a snake, and is mounting, you know, it's mounting, it's mounting. And I saw in a close video camera to focus in, this serpent was biting back, snapping back at the lake, hoping that the eagle will let go. And I was thinking, how come the eagle is not letting go? Sea snakes, by the way, are some of the most poisonous snakes. Most poisonous. I'm a, I'm a dive master, I'm a diver, so I know. We study all this. Which area, what snakes, what color, we have to study all of that. And it, it is one of the most dangerous. I'm wondering, why is it snapping? Nothing is happening. And then the commentator was saying, there is a thick layer of skin and tissue in the lake of the eagle, in the talons and all of that, and the, when the snake strikes back, even the teeth and the fangs cannot go in, therefore poison cannot be injected. And that's the same thing I heard the voice of the Lord. That's the way my church must be. The more I'm asking you to plunder the spoils of the enemy as they are carrying up the souls, the ministry, the work of the Lord, no matter how many times the enemy strike, nothing shall hurt you. You shall trample on snakes and scorpions. You think the snake and scorpion will be quiet when you trample them? Uh, no. 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 You think they'll be quiet? Uh, no, they're going to strike back. But the Bible promises no poison can hit you behind. Oh, therefore, God is upgrading our spiritual guts. Don't be afraid anymore. Don't pray that the devil won't show up. He's the devil. That's his ministry. He must show up. He must fulfill his ministry. He will show up. He will show up big, but we are ready in the name of Jesus. We are ready in the name of Jesus. About uh, seven or eight years, I want to give you this, some of the things that the man of God has been sharing with us. Talking about... Uh, the scars, battle scars. I went to speak in a pastor's conference in Australia for the Assemblies of God, North Region, where the pastors came by 100 pastors and their wives in a spiritual retreat. I shared a message. I definitely knew the Australians were going to kick me out, but somehow altar call given many pastors came on the altar. And I went down, as I stood in beside each of them, the Lord lifted up a veil out of them, and I saw battle scars, scars everywhere. And these scars proves they are warriors for the kingdom. They have fought God's battles, and they have overcome. And therefore, I want to encourage you once again. All the bad experiences you went through are scars you are carrying, proving in front of the demonic kingdom that you are a warrior. You know how to fight. You know how to pray. You know how to fast. You know how to speak the word. You know how to sing for the Lord. You know how to rejoice and dance. Hello? Are you listening? Higher in Him. That is why the church is commanded by God to teach the people in all the different disciplines of the Christian walk. Learning to speak, learning to rejoice, learning to worship, learning to fast, learning to pray, learning to give, learning to bless, learning to forgive, learning to be quiet, learning to be patient, learning to be merciful, learning to be long-suffering. Everything. There was an event in my life and I felt so difficult to just forgive. And I had all the rights not to forgive. I was fasting and praying for 21 days. The last day Jesus came. He told me, son, would you forgive? I said, yeah, but you see, I have the right. You see, I was telling all the points. Yeah. He listened to all the points. And the Lord said, I know you have the rights to be upset. Can you give up those rights for me? So now he's not asking me to forgive. Give up the right. 
to hold to him. Because I, he said, gave up my rights to live just for you. I took the cross and I gave up my right. But you give up my right. Ah, can you win the conversation? <laughs> when the Lord Jesus appears, you give up anything. Give up that rights and live for him. The last thing I want to finish. Revelations chapter 1 verse 10. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. I was thinking about this. My brothers and sisters, you must know that John was not in a very nice Acorn church. Was not in the fellowship of his brethren. He was thrown in the island of Patmos. A bunch of uh, people there, out there ready to die. And that's why they are there. It's almost like the Alcatraz. The only difference is Alcatraz is a prison managed. You have food, but there you are given to die. Forgotten. But this man still observed the Lord's day. Isn't it amazing? Those who are made by the hands of the Spirit, no matter where they are, they will observe their covenants with God. They will not forget who they are. On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit. Do you know how many revelations God is waiting to release upon us Sunday after Sunday? But most of the time, we are not in the spirit on the Lord's day. We are there dragging our feet. Better go to church life. Like, no, pastor will kill us. Yeah. Some people come huh, so that you won't receive a phone call. Better go. Just two hours. Never mind. Say hallelujah. Follow. Go back. Give money. Finish. They are mine immediately. Everybody SMSing. Hey, so pastors, you all are. Sometimes you got to walk through the congregation. You think they are taking your sermon notes, huh? They're actually checking out Makan Guru, you know, where to go for lunch. <laughs> Hello speaking, where to go for lunch. They're checking out their website. They are tutoring. Pastor, so boring. What kind of scripture? <laughs> I was in a church camp in Singapore. Worship was going on. I was sitting there. My friend invited me to speak. The Lord showed me immediately a group of youths, SMS, and the Lord told them, they are SMSing about the pastor, the youth pastor. I took the mic immediately from the pastor friend and said, you, you are SMSing about your pastor. He saw like a ghost, you know. Later, he took the phone and saw, he was commenting all the negative things about the youth pastor to another youth leader and that leader. Eventually, the pastor resigned from the church. Why? Because the youth leadership team parents are the main church committee. So whatever they do, no one can do anything. Now they control the youth pastor the same way the committee controls the employed pastor. So you see that spirit of control keeps coming in. And in that church, no pastors can work for a long time. We heard the word legalism and religious bodies. Exactly it is. Think about it for a moment. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You can start out in your flesh praying for a while, you know. It will all start like an engine starting. You got to wait until the spirit comes upon you. Then revelation takes place. Renewal takes place. I was having a, after the early morning prayer this few weeks ago, I was just having a cup of tea. I was just so tired. And then I saw the Lord walk in. And he brought a purple robe. I'm, I'm sharing with you with the permission of the Lord. Okay? Because I was just thinking about this. And I, and I said, is that okay? Okay. He took a purple robe. And I asked him, what is this robe? He said, this is the new mantle that I'm going to put upon you. Because you have entered a new season in 2013, we kept on hearing the prophet saying, 2013 has become a new season in the spirit. There is a shift that is taking place. Ah, purple always speaks of kingly anointing. 
doesn't mean you become a king and control and manipulate others. Huh? It is a spiritual authority that is to be used in the realm of the spirit. How powerful this anointing is. I want to give you an example, Pastor, calling God and how I met him. Just a few words about his church. It was in a small ground that he, he was uh, having in an office space and he didn't know me, I didn't know him. I was invited to go and speak in his church and uh, he gave me one kind of look up and down. You know why? Because in his church, it's a rule. You must wear a tie before you speak. A jacket. But uh, I didn't wear a tie. And the coordinator called me. You've got to wear a tie. I said, can't I? I can't. He said, how big is your church? Small. I forget it. And in their church, which they got delivered from, it's all being recorded, so don't worry. They wear a coat. They wear a tie. Nice, beautiful pants. They've got to take off the shoes. I told, told the pastor, what kind of kampong church law you have? <laughs> For holy ground, holy ground. He said, I'm going to the toilet, why? He said, wear the shoes. But this year they got delivered. <laughs> Can wear shoes already, so praise the Lord. So give me that look. Coordinator said, you got 45 minutes to finish speaking. I said, okay. I took the mic and went. As I was finishing, the Lord brought me into an office in Malaysia. A government office. I didn't know where it was, but I was brought into the office. I was standing beside an office clerk who was doing and approving some kind of papers. In that, uh, uh, he was approving, and the name of the files, different church files or whatever file they were, all stacked in. And then I saw the name of the church file was coming up. Each time the church file comes up, he takes it and put it underneath. So the project keeps on getting delayed. And the Lord was showing me, you have applied for something <clears throat> and has been delayed for many months. The Lord says, in the next, uh, this month, at that month I was there, it shall be approved. And I, and I said in Finnish. Later on, when we were having dinner, pastor told me that uh, they, up, uh, they applied for um, building approval license to build their new church. And was never approved for so many months. He keep on chasing people. And when I told him this, what was happening in the spirit, you guess what he did? You know how he threatens people. That's another gangster, you know, he. Really, really. Last time PJ gangster, that one. <laughs> Who threatened the Bible school principal. <laughs> the Bible school principal sacked one of the students, you know. So he asked the principal, instead of being a principal, you're behaving like a principality. <laughs> so he cannot suspend it from Bible school. <laughs> so when he knew what I told him by revelation, he calls the approving office clerk, who is in charge of his file, threatens him on the phone. I know what you're up to. God has shown me. You're trying to ask me, Bright. Each time the file comes out, you're putting it under. Now I'm telling you, you know, oh, he started to threaten. That file was approved in three days. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what happened. A biggest miracle happened. The mayor of PJ, that area, that city council mayor, Muslim organization, it's a Muslim government anyway, sent the church 10,000 ringgit check towards the building of the church and they put it up on the projector point. Amen. You see what prophetic anointing can do when we can see in the spirit. What more God can do. And that's how we became closer and closer as friends. Because the anointing, listen, prophetic anointing builds the church. The Bible says in the book of Ezra chapter 5, the prophets help the priests to build the temple of God. It cannot be extracted from the house. It must be part of the house of God. Why, why some people, oh, nobody likes me. I'm a prophetic person. Because you are like a wild stallion. That is why we have training. Academy of prophets, school of prophets, college of prophets. <laughs> University, the next one is coming up. <laughs> University, and nobody likes training. Oh, I like to be trained by the Spirit. What training? Train what? I, I do what I want. That is rebellion. 
The Bible says that one of the satanic attacks in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verses 20 to 25 is that when the spirit of Antichrist come, they will ask people to do what they want to do. But prophets are a man and a woman. They follow instructions of the Lord. That is why they're able to come up to the stage and now say, now the Lord said this. Now the Lord, saw the, uh, the Lord said, the Lord showed me this. The Lord wants me to say that. Why? Because they are man and woman under command. They follow what they have seen it and they do it. The present day church. We attend church, we miss the house of God. We hear the preacher, we miss the voice of the Lord. We sing songs, but we don't worship in the spirit. We see who's the person next to me, we forget to see whether the presence of God is there. We pray religiously, but we don't pray in the spirit. About five years ago, they did a survey among the Assemblies of God, Bible College uh, um, uh, um, uh, churches in Malaysia, and also in Singapore, but Singapore data was not released. Malaysia data was released. Less than 40% of the churches, among the leaders, only 4% practiced worshipping and speaking in tongues during worship services. Shocking data. People don't want that part. They, they, they say, it's not confusing. No, no, no. Let's do intelligent way of doing it. That's a lot of emphasis for talent. You know, this worship team who is playing, they fasted and prayed before playing. They fasted and prayed to choose the right song for the conference to open up the heavens. Even the speakers also cannot take it. All being moved. Because when he comes, all of us are nothing. He takes over. I was telling Pastor Amos, God willing, the next year conference, we must have a worship night, prophetically, just praying through and breaking through and rolling over. Oh my God, no, no, no rolling. Hey, listen, huh? when you come to a prophetic church, you give weird manifestation, we kick you out straight away. Doesn't mean you're prophetic, means you do weird things, you know. In a prophetic church, there is more order. More order than in a regular way. You'll be surprised. People think, oh, this is a I can say anything I want. Yeah, you try. It, huh? oh. <laughs> Pathetic and puppetic. A new words. We are learning new grammars in this conference. Gooder, goodest, <laughs> puppetic. <laughs> I, are you listening? I, I'm serious. In a given average church, it takes one year to discover the problematic person. This person with a wrong spirit. In a prophetic church, it takes five minutes. In the six minute, we kick them out from the service. Get out. That's how fast it is. Pastor, how come you're not so loving? Ah, they won't go to that church. They, they will love you. They kick you out. You come back here. We train you again. I'm, I'm serious, man. We are fighting a war. Every Sunday, you know how many people are waiting to hear from God, waiting to be set free, waiting, and our slummy feelings and drag is stealing other people's revelation for the day. So we need to pray that we will be higher in the spirit. One of the things we are praying as a committee, as a team for the conference, is that every year as we come together, we will be renewed, we will be renewed, we will be renewed. There will be transformational change in our character, in our service for the Lord, in our behavior, within our changes, that it will become a testimony. That's the thing we are praying, not another conference. Amen? And I pray in the name of Jesus that God will make us to be a fruitful person in the Lord's day. In the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. Peter was praying in the spirit in Acts chapter 10. And he fell into a trance. Paul was taken up into the third heaven. John said, the Lord said, come up to me. All in the Lord's day. They were praying. They were praying.
Ezekiel was praying, the hand of the Lord came and then carried him. It could be all extra experiences, but it was changing their life for the glory of the Father. Can we all stand up together? I took a few minutes, uh, maybe 10 minutes more, I think. Higher in Him. Higher in Him. Father, can I, can I just ask you to just, just look up to heaven for a few moments right now? Higher. Higher in Him. Father, we want to worship you. Higher. I pray for a spiritual elevation in the name of Jesus right now. There is a higher dimension, a higher revelation, a higher truth, a higher way of thinking that God can renew our spirit man. There is a higher level of faith to operate from. There is a higher level of prayer to which warfare, not fighting like, like people out there and rebuking everything, but just rebuke one thing strategically, every door would open up. There is a way of accuracy in the spirit and only he can show you only he can show you just play the song the last song that we just sang just softly i just want to i'll have you to just worship quietly in your spirit for a moment praying for that higher a touch of god's ascension taking place in your spirit man right now you know, father and mother, if you are crying about your children and their ways, there is a higher realm which God is waiting to give them. You've got to have that ability to see afar and believe. There is a higher level that we must learn how to tap. There is a higher level of worship. If we will know how to tap, oh, the presence comes down. When the presence comes, He will give you the truth of the kingdom. He will give you the truth of revelation. He will teach you when to pray and when to wait, when to rejoice. He will teach you the secrets of His covenant. Bible says, I will renew you. You shall be renewed. You shall mount up. You shall run. You shall walk. There is no one verse to say you will stop. No. Because waiting before God is a very expensive and sometimes very tiring spiritual exercise. They are renewing themselves. If you would want God to renew you, say, Lord, I really need an upgrade. I really need to know how to pray deeper and deeper. Like the Mahaglizi. You know, Pastor Amos, Pastor. You're going to prophesy to the Singapore government. The next assignment. God used to in all the different kingdoms. He just showed me. Tell him. He's going to speak into the parliamentary level of this nation. There shall no longer be fear when I shall back you up with my power. When I shall back you up with my spirit. There shall no longer be fear because I will hover around you and I see a mental can, can I ask the pastors to just, you know, put your hands around me, man. I see a mantle of a cloud, like a glory all around you. It's a different kind. It's not the normal mantle of, of, uh, uh, of an, an any other mantle that we are talking about. It's a senior level of carrying a governmental a level of anointing. The anointing that will make you to stand before kings and priests. And, and, and uh, when you say, thus say the Lord, even if those policies are not there, God will speak it into being. It shall happen because you open your mouth and say, when you say in the midst of a poverty, you know, you shall prosper, God will realign the assignments, the ministers, and they will have good plans, 
to prosper and that is an, a very different mental i see you being lifted up in the heavenlies and this mental is not like a robe of a cloth it is like a glory cloud type of a mental that is just resting on your shoulders come on somebody come and pray in the spirit for many years, for many years, Pastor Amos was the first man in this nation to declare he has been a prophet and an apostle. For 30 years, he has been carrying that anointing. But in this nation, in this nation, now I will open a new chapter and I see a reference uh, uh, covered a reference file covered and this file is being opened up and uh, many different segments and section many different files are inside and the lord is going to open the file and show you what is going to happen what are the secret planning what are the motives and the agendas Come on, pray for our pastor. Pray, 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 pray. You know, we are here to pray for you, but right now, let's pray for the man. Hilimi Mamanda. Go up in the heavens right now. Higher and higher in the spirit right now. Higher. Higher. Oh, higher. Makandi Borosilimi Baratemo. Mirihindala Bazindaya. And I see a new shoes is being given, all golden in color, all golden in color. It is almost like shoes to walk in the royal court. Abakana Mahai! And the Lord is going to release the Daniel's anointing. For you shall stand before Nebuchadnezzar and declare, Thus saith the Lord. The kingdom of Babylon will be pulled down as you establish the kingdom of the Father. Amen. Sri Lanka, even India. There are some political leaders who will come to you like Nicodemus in the night because they are afraid of the day. You know, my son, I used you as a Nehemiah in the beginning. You were in the royal courts, but you didn't feel like a royal person. I kept on giving you the burden to rebuild my walls. I kept on stirring your spirit. I took away the appetite, uh, appetite for food, and you keep fasting and praying more, and you feel you felt so inadequate because the walls of Jerusalem were so big and you were so small. You kept having that burden. You kept having the burden and you kept building as much you can. And you kept fighting into the different territories. Now you are no longer that Nehemiah. You are the Daniel the prophet who will now stand directly against the dragon, against the spirit of Jezebel, against the Babylonian kingdom and the system, and you will declare, thus saith the Lord. Because Daniel said, O oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, there is a God above in heaven who is greater than you. What a guts he must have. He was keeping his head on the roller blade to say that the most feared king but that's what God is going to give you I see the golden shoes to stand before kings but my son as much as it is in the open it will also be such a hidden ministry when I will invite you into my royal presence because these men and women whom you are going to say, they are not going to acknowledge you publicly. 
yet they will acknowledge the policies. They will adopt the changes. And so my son, your crown is from me. Your reward is from me. It is not the applause of these people, but the applause of the only one who has called you into being, who has called you from a distance. I have tested you in the cold winter, in the hottest summer. I have tested you amongst the richest of all and among poverty. I have tested you in the palace and in the nomad tent. Yet, you kept your heart faithful. You kept going and building. You stirred yourself away from the pride of man. You kept building my walls. You kept building my walls. You kept building my walls. But all that I did not tell you, which part of the walls you were building. The day will come, my son, when you stand in my presence and look down. You have been building my walls, my kingdom, my glory. And so I can come and dwell among men. Oh, there were times you said, God, people come, people go. I have trained thousands of people, but only a handful are still with me. The day will come. You will stand before me. And when you look down, a large multitude will be gathered there. And they will declare, this is my father who trained us. This is my father who blessed us. But my son, my reward is, your reward is from me. So I have hidden all this people away from you so that your eyes will not be dist distracted in the numbers but it always in that one person that whom you can see. I'm always the one who's standing before you. I'm always the one who has come and appeared before you when you prayed. And uh, I don't know when pastor, only recently the last few days you were kneeling and praying and I see a very orange robe Jesus came into the room he stood there and you were just kneeling and praying you didn't see but he was standing there and his feet was very close to your body the fragrance was just sweeping all over you and the Lord again affirmed my son you have found favor. You have found favor in my eyes. You kept on praying for Moses type of favor. But you have found favor a long time ago. Death will no longer prevail in Jesus' name. When you declare life, it will be life. When you declare rivers in the wilderness, I will command waters to gush out. I have given you the rod. I have trusted you with my power. And you have done it well, my son, says the Lord. You gave love out to everybody. But at times when you needed the love, inside when you were so hurting you only came to me and I saw that my son you only came to me and I always and the Lord saying like a, the affection of a father is looking at you he says I have a special spot in my heart for you my son you have done my bidding I will be there for him is literally Father I want to thank you can you can you release your you know put up your hand and affirm this man the spiritual father of the house just release that grace release that grace release love out of your heart just release love release healing release mercy Release, release, just keep on releasing. I don't know when the Lord told you this. I see a set of keys and the Lord gave to you, which you did not really tell to many people. The Lord said, son, I've given you the keys of the kingdom for this nation. 
You just have to take this key and open. But you did not want to do it. You didn't want to upset the system. You don't want to put your head up and say, Thus say the Lord. You just wanted to maintain the unity of the brethren. But the keys is in your pocket. No duplicate keys can open any door. So you've got to use the keys. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for his life. We want to thank you for his wife, Pastor Rani. We want to thank you for the dedication in missions away, in missions at home, both in the family. Lord, the only thing they know in their house is to lift up the cross. And I see a big cross being lifted up in the house. Every turn, every pain, every joy, you talk about the cross and sacrifice. So Father, I thank you the grace that will come. And I want to thank you for the anointing and grace that is going to come tonight through this man. Your power is going to set people free and let it be tonight where we will experience the opening of the floodgates of heaven to the keys of the kingdom. I will give you a new tongue, says the Lord. I'm going to give you a new word, says the Lord. A new word of authority is going to come. Never before you have experienced, as you say, it will pierce through darkness and it shall come to pass, says the Lord. 2013 plus 7. Your words, like the anointing that God gave to Joseph, the seven years, preparation. Something is going to happen inside your spirit as you speak forth that word. It's going to take effect. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we want to thank you and give you all the glory for your presence, for your grace, for your affirmation, and for your love. You know, like we always say, when you make sure the Father in the house is happy, the whole house will be just in order. I want to thank you for reaffirming the Father in the house, that everything else will just flow right. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a powerful, powerful clap offering. Hallelujah.